In 1892, Nikola Tesla proposed the concept of transmitting information via electromagnetic radiation. He went on to apply for two key radio patents in 1897. By 1909, the first broadcasting stations in the United States were beginning to open, with personal radios becoming popular. Also by the early 1900s, radios began to appear in ships. Initially as a means of communicating distress, it eventually evolved into a navigational technique. By the 1930s, radio triangulation had become the most popular form of navigation utilized by airline pilots. This resulted in radio stations being marked on navigational charts and maps. Radio triangulation was heavily practiced throughout World War II. Allied forces intercepted German transmissions to trace the whereabouts of hidden U-boats, and Axis powers applied the new technology to making their bombing runs more accurate. In post-World War II Europe, radio triangulation was often used to locate hidden radio transmitters employed in espionage, especially in the UK. Modern air travel in the 1960s became possible due to radio triangulation. A network of beacons known as the Vor system was established across the United States, allowing pilots to easily cross the continent. However, after the 1960s, this method of navigation began to fall out of favor. It was eventually replaced by modern global positioning satellites, which are more accurate and convenient to use. Despite the fact that radio triangulation only plays a minor role in navigation today, it can still be found in a number of modern settings. It is often used for tracking wildlife using a radio collar. In some countries, it has also become a sport where teams compete in a wilderness setting to find hidden radio beacons. Known as amateur radio direction finding, it has become popular throughout China and much of Eastern Europe. These amateurs often use the same simple mobile radio equipment our team used in this project. Our team decided to test the accuracy of radio triangulation in comparison to a modern GPS device. We hypothesized that we could triangulate our position to within a range of about 5 miles by 5 miles using AM radio waves and allowing for a range of 5 degrees of uncertainty per angle measure. To test our hypothesis, we split up our team. Truman was our driver and knew the actual coordinates of four different mystery locations across the Boston area. Our other three teammates, Sebastian, Will, and Charlie, were blindfolded before arriving at each mystery location and had to use radio triangulation to find out where they were. The uh, guys are trying to figure out their location using triangulation. I have everyone's cell phone here so they can't use GPS to cheat. And then uh, after they figure it out, we're going to find out who's the closest, plotting their location using the triangulation, then we're going to confirm it with the GPS. Let's go to our first station. Can you, can you tell me what uh, do you, do you do the station compass? 590 is? AM radios receive the strongest reception when they are perpendicular to the direction of travel waves from the transmitting tower. To find the location via triangulation, our team attempted to find the null, or weakest radio signal, that occurs when the receiver is parallel to the wave's direction of travel. That's it right there. Alright guys, getting a null right here. About 190 is our, is our bearing right now. Right now we are repeating our previous step by attempting to find our bearing or back bearing based on our radio station 950 WROL. Just got the first two bearings and back bearings for the radio stations at location two. Looking forward to getting the third one. Our team takes each compass reading aligned with each receiver direction as either a bearing or back bearing to the radio tower. This becomes more clear when we plot the radio station coordinates on a Mercator projection. That looks, looks pretty it's looking like uh, ish it's looking like 45. Yep. That's it. Okay, right here. This side. Our phone, our phones were aligned pretty well with our first observation, so we think we're in pretty good shape. Yes, sir. Somewhere deep in the woods in a western mass, it appears. We set up tents. We expect it'll be a long night. We can't navigate our way out of here. Yep. Just hoping we can get out of here. <laughs> yep. Hoping the AM radio waves are. They attack me, and we get this Twitter street fight going, which I love. Uh, I also love checking in with Steve Landry about the traffic. You know how you describe uh, Newt Gingrich? A political psychopath. <laughs> and I thought that was a pretty good way to say <laughs> After getting bearings from three different stations, our team plots an area from the intersections of three bearings that enclose our position. Well, that can't be. Wait a minute. Based on my rough calculations, we must be... We're at Harvard. We're at Harvard Yard. Yard. Yeah. Let's take right. a look. Let's look. Here we are. Well. <laughs> Location one was located in Arsenal. Its actual coordinates, according to GPS, were 42 degrees and 21 arc minutes north, 
and 71 degrees and 9 arc minutes. From our Mercator plot of Boston latitudes and longitudes along with our compass readings, we determined our back bearing from radio 680 to be 170 or 350 degrees, from radio 950 to be 60 degrees or 240 degrees, and from radio 1200 to be 210 degrees or 30 degrees. After plotting these back bearings on the Mercator grid along with our uncertainty angle of 5 degrees in either direction, we determined our latitude and longitude ranges by eyeballing the shaded areas of overlap on the graph. For site 1, we found a latitude range of 12 arc minutes. Since we know that 1 degree of latitude is equal to about 69 overland miles, the distance range for site 1 must be 13.8 miles. We determined the map scale to be 1 inch equal to 6 arc minutes equal to 6.9 miles. For site 1, the longitude range is equal to 8 arc minutes. Using this map distance, we calculated the longitude range to be 9 miles. This gives us an area of 13.8 by 9 miles within which our GPS location should exist. We did the same analysis for each of our other three locations. At location 2 in Newton, we found the range to be 28 square miles. At location 3 in Wellesley, we found the range to be 99 square miles. At location 4 in Harvard Yard, we found the range to be 24 square miles. Our original hypothesis was that radio triangulation would give us an area of 5 miles by 5 miles within which our location could be found. The good news is that all of our calculated areas, including uncertainty, encapsulated our GPS position. The bad news is that some of our ranges were well beyond the expected range. Perhaps with a more precise compass that did not have as large of an uncertainty in its measurements, the size of the calculated areas could be reduced.